Hi, welcome to week three. This week, we're going to be looking at integrating open educational resources in online learning. I am Professor Inegbedion Juliet Owajaji. Now, let's look at the content for the week. The week is divided into five units. In unit one, we shall be looking at writing acceptable course learning objectives. In unit two, we'll be looking at writing acceptable unit learning outcome. And in unit three, we shall be looking at matching learning outcome with learning activities. And in unit four, we're going to be looking at matching learning outcome with learning resources. And in unit five, it's going to be assignment. The day that you would have spent in taking your unit five, you're going to dedicate that day to take your assignment. Start working on your assignment on that day so you'll be able to complete it by the due date and submit. Now, let's start with unit one, writing a setable course learning objective. In the learning outcome for this unit, is that you will be able to write measurable learning objectives by the end of this unit. Now, points you need to note about learning objective. One is that stated in more specific terms than learning goals. Learning objectives are stated in more specific terms than learning goals. Again, learning objectives are observable and measurable. This will guide the breakdown of your course into smaller units or manageable chunks. When you do not set it in observable and measurable methods, you will find it difficult to break down into smaller bits that will make the learning more manageable and interesting. The learning objectives are teacher-centered. Again, we need to know that learning objectives are useful in breaking down your content into smaller chunks and to formulate more specific learning outcomes. So when your learning objectives are not properly set, then you will have issue or difficulty or challenges in breaking down your content into smaller form and coming up with a more meaningful learning outcomes. Now, let us look at the criteria guiding writing of learning objectives. What are these criteria? First, you have to look at the taxonomy of learning you want to address. Because the taxonomy of learning you want to address is going to give you a guide of the type of active verb you're going to use to determine that. Again, you have to look at the level of the taxonomy and we have looked at the taxonomy of learning you want to address. Remember, we have three taxonomy of learning. We have a cognitive, affective, and psychomotor. But having known the taxonomy of learning you want to address is equally important for you to look out for the level of the taxonomy. If you remember the cognitive taxonomy, we have different levels, starting from the lower level to the upper level, which is creating. So if you know what you want to achieve, it will help you to determine exactly what you need. Then there must be an active verb. The active verb that we reflect the level of taxonomy to be addressed. Again, if you have this, it will help you a great deal to walk through your work. Now, let us look at an example. Let's assume, let assume there is a learning need to teach master students in educational planning and administration on how to apply statistics for effective educational planning and administration of schools. To meet the need, a new course titled Statistics for Educational Managers was introduced 
into the student's program. This is the scenario. Now, this program where this course will be taken is an online course. You are required to develop learning objective for the course. And from the learning objective, you are to develop modular topics for the course. And you are to create subtopics or units for the same course derived from the modular headings. Now, what are you going to do? The first thing you need to do is to look at what is required. And in this regard, we are now going to bring in our RD model. The RD model starts with analysis. So the first step you need to take is to analyze the situation. Like here we have been told what the situation is, that a new course is being introduced. Why? Because you want to teach the master students in educational ad admin and planning on how to apply statistics in managing educational planning and administration in schools. So if that is the scenario, you have to do the analysis. And going by the analysis also, we are told that the program is an online program, which means we are not blending face-to-face -face and online. This is a purely an online program. Again, we have been told the target audience. The target audience are master's uh, students. These are the target audience, the master's students. And in this regard, we are having a little bit of scenario. We are having a good background on what is involved. So what do we now need to do further? You need to see go further and find out what is institutional support? What are the available infrastructure that you're going to use? Do you have everything that you will need for such an online course? And if not, what are the alternatives that you have on ground? So having done this, that will take care of your step one of the adding model, which is analysis. From there, you're going to move to the second part, which is design. At this point, you are not going to end all the design, but we because of the kind of task that is presented to us, you're going to start the design. And the first thing you need to now do is to look out for the course objective. Look out for the course objective. And once you have found the course objective, you look through the course formation, then you are good to go. So the next thing you now need to do to begin your plan is to derive the objective, the course objective. So let's look at this. In this regard, this is an example of a course going by the topic that is being given to us on the task that is given to us on the educational statistics, the statistics for educational managers. Now, here I have come up with some course objective. Here is the first. And it says, use basic concepts in educational management statistics related to role, to role data and management information system to solve educational challenges. Remember, it is teacher-centered. This is what I intend to achieve in this course to use basic concepts. It says broad. Then the second one I stated says, apply statistical indicators to determine required educational resources. And the third says, solve school infrastructural challenges using costing techniques. These are my course objectives for this particular task. Now, now that we have had a course objective, the next thing says derive the modular topics. And this is the best way you can really do it. So from here, I'm going to create a topic, a big topic, here and under and here and under. Now, let's come to this place and see the first modular topic created. From that first objective, I've come up to CAV to say 
basic concept in statistics for educational managers. If you look at this topic, you see that it's derived from here. Then let's see the second one. The second one said application of statistics, SQL indicators, a resource requirement in education. Remember again, you look at this place, apply statistical indicators. So now making a topic, big topic out of it, saying application of statistical indicators in resource requirements in education. Now, the third one says educational planning costing techniques. And if you look at the objective, the objective is to solve school infrastructural challenges using costing techniques. So if I do not understand costing techniques, I will not be able to apply it here. Now, again, that tag says we should look at the subtopics. So I go again to look at the subtopics on that will be one. So you see that I'm breaking them now into smaller chunks. And that basic concept in statistics for educational managers is now divided into four units. I have the role of statistics in educational management, types of educational data, sources of educational data, implication of educational data in educational management. Then again, if you look at module two, I've broken module two too, you see that what you have here as a subtopic is related to the modular, and the modular is related to the objective. And the same thing goes under module two, and the same thing for module three. So one thing you need to take away here is this. You discover that where you have your course objective, it helps you to break down the topic you have to teach or you want to give to your student those smaller bits in a manageable form. So this is what we need to understand when working on things like this. This is how you apply the model. So you discover we have started the application, we have looked at the analysis, and we have started the design. This is not the end of the design, but we started it. This is where you take it from on a gradual note. So before we conclude, I want to say that you begin to look at your assignments, and work through it so that you keep practicing and if you have any challenge feel free to ask now in conclusion learning objectives are teacher centered which helps in the creation of topics to be taught in smaller chunks which we saw a while ago with focus on the course goal to write adequate course objectives start with the course analysis using the adding model now apply this to your assignments thank you for listening